<laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Never Ending Story is getting uh, remade. <laughs> yeah, the Never Ending Story is getting remade. Just what uh, we needed. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I thought we needed. More remakes. Yeah. Did, did you not? You agree? I thought we hey, needed more yeah. remakes. I love it. It's funny. So like... I recently read the story that uh, states that Gen Z, according to multiple surveys, they don't want remakes and they don't want reboots nope. of their parents and their grandparents' properties. They want original stories. And what is this? <laughs> this is yet another of their grandparents' properties being forced upon them that they didn't ask for. And their grandparents didn't ask for it either. Well, the thing about this is, who the hell is this actually for, right? Because the people that grew up with this watched it. And it's 1984, right? This is sacrilegious, almost, right? Like, this is the film that you don't remake. You know, this is a great film. has a lot of charm. It's brilliant. So who's this for? Because younger people aren't going to know who it is. And then the, the, the older people that watch the original are not going to want to watch the new one. So who's this actually for? Because the younger generation, they're not going to care about this either. Like, I genuinely don't think they're going to care that much. And you know what? You know what's going to be really bad about this, and you know it too. It's not going to be practical effects, and that was what was so good about the original. Falcor, Falcor is going to be a giant CGI piece of junk, and you know it. You absolutely yep. know it. Because whenever they do this, whenever they reboot things or remake things which had traditionally great practical effects, they don't go the practical route. They go the easier route of CGI. Because it is it's easier. It's ironic because it's a more expensive route. Yeah. Absolutely but I mean, terrible news. The, the reality of, of having a full, fully puppeteered luck dragon or any of the other creatures that are featured in this, the, 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 there's something about that realism, that practical effect that makes a difference in all of these things. It's why we were just talking about Alien Romulus where you have this full slate of puppeteers that are working on this. You 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 try to replace that with CGI, it's not going to land the same way. It won't it won't <laughs> feel authentic or real. I mean, this is supposed to be a fantastical stories. Are you going to get rid That's of the horse? Or, I mean, Matt, I was, I've no idea. It's I mean, bloody awful. That's yeah, absolutely awful. So, just as a quick one, let's get through this. Falcor flies again. Never-ending story. The beloved fantasy novel, yes, from late German author Michael End that was famously adapted into the cult 84 film is being revived for the big screen once more with a new joint venture partnership between Michael End Productions and Prestige uh, Tastemakers Seesaw Films. Seesaw Films are terrible, by the way. They have not really done anything that enables them, in my eyes, to make this, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, so bringing the world of fantastic, uh, fantastic, it's Fantasia, isn't it? Back to cinemas over multiple live action films. So they're even planning already before they've made one film, multiple films. Yay, good, great. Yeah, so I, I love it when they do that. When they plan it and they like, and they they mix them a little bit together, setting up parts two and three, and then it flops, and part two and three never happens. And then you are yeah. left with an unwatchable part one because it doesn't make sense on its own. That's what happened with John Carter. Remember that Disney movie? Which yeah. Which should have been John Carter of Mars. They were so sure it was going to be part two, three, four, and five that they started mixing in concepts from the later books into the first one. And then it never happened. And now the first one is unwatchable on its own. Yeah. Bloody terrible. Bloody, bloody terrible. But wait, there's more. So um, let's just scroll through this to, to see what these people have done because they've not really done anything. Um, do, 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 do. So Seesaw, the never-ending story is a much bigger and more elaborate piece of material than it's used to handling. So Seesaw Productions. It marks the next step up for the London and Sydney-based company, first founded in 2008 and made famous by The King's Speech. Right. And then what have they done recently? Some TV drama, Heartstopper, and Slow Horses. That's very confidence-inspiring right there. 
<laughs> like, who thought this was a good idea? This is dog <laughs> shit. <sighs> like, this is terrible. This is actually terrible. So we've had some good news, guys. I think good news anyway. Uh, and now we're on to some bad news. What? What? Why? Who thought this is not going to be good? And they're like, we're going to make loads. Don't. Don't, don't even make one. <laughs> Just don't bother. Like, what are you doing? I wonder who the hell funds that. Well, no, actually, I do know. It's people who are pure financiers and investors who don't know anything about what they're investing in. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is going to be like Rings of Power all over again, but yeah. with the series. Yeah, where basically you have all of the charts and they're able to reference this is what this brand has made in the past. Look what the Peter Jackson's movie did. But you you can do a purely uh, quantitative analysis, but they're completely missing the qualitative aspect. This won't yeah. work because this and that. that There's no room for that in their charts and then their graphs. And that is why you get stuff like this happening. Because yeah, the they people even, that they needed even to put something. an end to it doesn't compute for them. Yeah, they, they even say something that really irks me. So uh, where was it? So the, the story is both timely, timely and timeless and really has an opportunity to be told in a fresh way. No one wants it in a fresh way. Shut the fuck up. And part of the specialness of the book is that you can go back to it at different ages in your life and find different levels of meaning. So listen to this. So how wonderful that we have this opportunity to do a fresh perspective. Oh, boy. No one wants a fresh perspective. No. That will have new layers and meanings. We don't want new layers and meanings. We just believe that every generation deserves their own own journey into it's not it's that fantastic. first it part fantastic. of the statement has nothing to do with the last because the whole point uh, is that yeah, you can read something at different stages in your life and you get a different something out of it. Absolutely. But that mm. is undercut if you make a completely different, uh, different uh, adaptation for for new generations and their sensibilities, at least how you perceive them. That completely undermines that. I mean, if anything, people should then go back and rewatch the original movie and get something new out of that, as you would the book. I mean, yeah. a, a go-to example there is like the comics, uh, Calvin and Hobbes, if you're familiar with that. If you read them when, when you're a kid and you identify with the kid, it's one thing. Reread them as an adult and you see it from the eyes of an adult, it's going to be an eye-opening experience because that's when you see the author's true intention all along. Mm. Uh, and uh, I haven't read this book, but probably it's the same thing. But they're undermining that by, the movie, by doing this. Hmm? Have you seen the movie? Yes, I have. Many, many years ago. Good. Oh, go on, Nick. What do you think, mate? Uh, this goes back to a statement I've made multiple times on Hollywood basically being creatively bankrupt. Uh, mm. it's, it just goes back to sequels, remakes, reboots. Now, granted, if, if you do it right, I'm fine with it. Like everybody here knows one of my most hyped forms of any piece of entertainment is Final Fantasy VII remake series, which is the second game that came out this year, Rebirth. But this remake, it's more of a continuation of the original story, of the original game. Um, it's not a one-to-one -one remake, per se. It's more like a. it's turning out more to be like a sequel. So in that aspect of it, where it's like the same story is being told, but there's some changes, and it's actually a continuation and kind of a cool way to go about doing a remake like that, I mm. think is awesome. I'm fine with, with that. Um, but... Uh, they're just going to make this for, I can hear it now, this is going to be made for modern audiences. You know what's coming. Yeah. Uh, you know we're going to get it. And when people see it, they're going to be like, okay, this sucks. Uh, and it's going to get trashed on. 
Uh, yeah. and, and they're just going to keep doing the same stuff. Uh, I, I don't know how much longer these studios can keep just losing money, throwing money away. I mean, if they're getting financed by all these big investment companies, I mean, I guess I can just keep doing it forever. And who cares if they're losing money? Uh, but I mean, surely somebody that's attached to all this stuff has got to care uh, at some point in you time. Think. Yeah, you would think. But they just they just keep doing it. So uh, I, I, I'm not I'm not for this uh, at all. And I think it's probably going to be more modern day woke garbage trash. Well, it's, it's not going to be. It'll be a bloody. It'll be a young girl. We know that much straight away. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, it's not going to be a young boy. It's going to be a young bloody girl. She's yeah, be or bullied. it could be no, non-binary. Just... To where no, no, no. Be... It's going to be a, it's going to be a black girl. She'll be bullied because of her race, her ethnicity, yeah. and it, that's what it'll be. That's better be. clip that because that's exactly what it's going to be. Yeah, Garen fucking tear. Yeah, Garen and then when it. we actually get it, you can be like, hey, hey, uh, March twenty first, twenty twenty four. This is from the show that day. Guess what, guys? <laughs> right. We called it. We called it. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, closing thoughts. Culture, you want to add anything to this, bud? I Look, I'm just bummed out because I love the original film. The book's great. Um, making a series of films is going to be a problem. Um, mm. Look, if you've ever seen The King's Speech, it was not stellar despite all the love it received and the reason it made all the money it did at the time back in 2010 was because it was in theaters for 203 days domestically mm. so it literally just sat in theaters uh for two-thirds of the year um the there's there's not a lot there slow horses wasn't good there's just a lot <laughs> so you're just you're handing this over to an unproven entity that is going to wildly uh, diverge from the the source material clearly just by reading through this article. So, as mm. I covered it this mo- this morning on my six minute daily, I have zero interest in this. So, yeah, I have a feeling. Well, William Fleming, that. super chat a dollar says a never ending story remake. Lol, I can see it now. This is my horse, uh, R tracks. He's gay and eats hay. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we got Doug VA loves horror as well. Uh, jumps in and says, "What are they going to remake next? The Fifth Element?" <laughs> oh, thank you, my dears, mate. Thank well, it dears. is probably coming eventually, one day. Well, mm. um, something that has been in development for quite some time isn't the Fifth Element per se, but the property that the Fifth Element is a blatant rip-up of, namely the Inkal by Alejandro Hodorowski of Hodorowski's Dune fame. That is something that was announced, I don't know, three, four years ago from Taika, from director Taika Waititi. And then I haven't heard anything about it since. But but who knows? Maybe now post-strike and everything, maybe, uh, maybe uh, that's going to get back again and that is something that could be construed as a remake of the fifth element because the fifth element was such a rip-off of it. Mm.